a believer is he who goes through life knowing for sure that every day which passes will bring him closer to death and will never come back again. One can wish anything he wants or she wants, but the fact of the matter is every second that passes is counted and it will never come back until we resurrected to see the outcome of that second. And that's the reason why a true believer strives very hard to do everything and anything that will benefit him in the hereafter and will be a reason for his salvation on that day. And one of the best means of salvation is to be a beneficial believer, one who benefits others. A person or such a person, you see him always keen on realizing that which is good to others, fulfilling their needs in any which way he can, either personally or through others. Whether that in the form of wealth, by giving or inviting others to give as charity, paying off debts, going to someone who's a lender and ask him to give respite to the indebted and so on and so forth or by knowledge, teaching others, guiding the misguided, directing the one who's confused, or by virtue of status and rank, by interceding to others or him himself, fulfilling people's needs, or by a good word. Consoling a distressed, reconciling between two people, spouses, relatives, friends, neighbors, classmates, colleagues, any which way he can. He is beneficial in all situations and he is a positive and a productive element in his community and society. He is a source of blessing to others wherever he goes. As Allah described Isa, وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتْ And he has made me a blessing wherever I go. Meaning, I am a source of benefit wherever I go. So we need to be such a person. Benefit others as much as possible. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Muslim. He said, whoever can benefit his Muslim, his Muslim brother or sister, then let him benefit him. There are many fruits <coughs> resulting from being beneficial to others. We uh, like to be described as the best of people. The Prophet ﷺ said, The best amongst you are those 
whom people hope to benefit from, meaning whom people expect benefit from. They are a source, they're known to be a source of benefit. Whenever people ask them for something, they either fulfill it or intercede with others to fulfill it. So we need to strive hard to be amongst the best, but the best with whom? It's not the best with your boss, with your director, with the head of state. It is the best with Allah. So working to obtain this khayrukum, the best with Allah is really worth it. But it takes work. It takes effort. And uh, never belittle any effort you can exert, any benefit you can realize. Because you don't know what it means to others. And you don't know what the consequence of that is on your scale of good deeds on the Day of Judgment. This, re this hadith was reported by Ahmed, by the way, and classified as authentic. The one that says, the best amongst you. And the Prophet ﷺ warned us against, or rather brought to our attention, that the issue of significant and insignificant is not a decisive point because what you might deem insignificant can be something huge on the scale of good deeds on the day of judgment. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا أن تأتيه. This is also reported by Ahmed, classified as authentic by Albani. He said, don't belittle or consider insignificant anything, any kind of kindness, of benevolence, of benefit, which you can fulfill or make uh, realize. We always raise our hands, Oh Allah help, Oh Allah help, we need your help, we need your support. Well, you can get that by helping others. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet wasallam said, Allah will continue to be in support of the one or the slave who is supporting his Muslim brother. And he said, and this is in Muslim, he said, whoever relieves a distress from a calamity, from the calamities of this worldly life, Allah will relieve him from a distress in this dunya and in the hereafter. So you see the reward is not proportional. It's not insignificant, therefore the reward is going to be insignificant. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ said in the, the narration we just quoted. No, you do something Allah will multiply, will give you much more in abundance in this life and in the hereafter. Love of Allah ﷺ. Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen rahmatullahi alayhi said, the issue is not to love, but the challenge is to be loved. Everyone claims to love Allah, but who will be deserving of the love of Allah? We all love Allah or claim to do so or to be so, but who amongst us is deserving to be loved by Allah? Well, by being beneficial to others, you earn this. In the book of Al Imam Al Tabarani, and it's classified as sound by Al Albani, the Prophet وسلم, said, The most beloved to Allah from people are those who are more beneficial to people. The more you benefit others, 
you, the more Allah loves you. So you want to earn that? That difficult thing to obtain? Well, as we said, it takes effort, it needs work, it takes commitment. But it is doable, it is not impossible. This is one simple way of earning the love of Allah. The issue here that is that sometimes people feel bored, overburdened by too many people knocking their door. You're a person of wealth, known to be a person who's generous, who has wealth and is generous. So people by default are going to go and ask you when there's a need, whether for themselves or for any other person, organization, cause, whatever. You're a person of a high status in a community and people know that you are keen on fulfilling, fulfilling people's needs. People will go to your door and ask your help. Sometimes it's not a lofty rank in the community. Sometimes you happen to be a person with a certain skill or profession. You might be the Imam of the community and therefore people call you for different matters. Dispute with his wife, with her husband, a matter in jurisprudence they don't know the answer to, a problem with their child, and so on and so forth. This is the task of having that blessing from Allah. The blessing of having knowledge. The has, it has a tax. The tax is teaching others, expecting others to call or to consult, and so on. You're a doctor in the community. Yes, expect people to call you. And be patient. And don't feel bored. It's a blessing Allah Azza wa Jal has given you. Let them call you, let them ask you, answer them, and always answer them. Because, you know, the danger here is that you might be deprived, which is the fourth benefit of benefiting others, or fruit of benefiting others, is that benefiting others is a means of maintaining and preserving the blessing Allah Azza wa had bestowed upon you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is reported by al tabarani classified as sound by Al-Albani. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Azza wa blesses certain people with some bounties. He will continue to keep it with them, make them enjoy it, make, it, make them benefit from it. So long as they benefit others with it and are not bored. Once they become bored, Allah will remove it from them and take it to and give it to others. So whatever Allah Azza wa Jal has given you as a blessing, Make sure that you utilize it to benefit others. Otherwise, expect it to depart and leave you. Because it was given to you so that you benefit and others benefit from it. So you enjoy it and others benefit from it and you earn reward as a result of paying the tax of that blessing and bounty. Allah Azza wa Jal says, مَنْ يَشْفَعْ شَفَاعَةً حَسَنَةً يَكُنْ لَهُ نَصِيبٌ مِّنْهَا Whoever intercedes in a good cause will have a share in the reward. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Ishfa'u tu'jaru. This is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Intercede 
meaning seek help to fulfill other people's needs and you will be rewarded. Sheikh Sa'di rahmatullahi alayhi said regarding this narration, he said the Prophet وسلم, laid a foundation, a, a very fundamental rule, which is that people must strive to fulfill other people's needs by intercession, by inviting others to help them, by requesting others to help them, regardless of whether or not the matter is fulfilled completely, partially, or none of it is fulfilled. You will still be rewarded for simply interceding, requesting, inviting, informing others to help. The uh, Salaf, rahmatullahi alayhi them, the early generations, used to consider people not coming to them to fulfill their needs or for intercession to fulfill other people's needs to be a disaster, to be a major serious problem. Hizam ibn Hakim, rahmatullahi alayhi, said, if a day passes, if a, day, a single day passes, and I do not receive someone seeking my help in some of his needs, then I know it is a disaster that just befell me. That's the type of caliber these people were. That's how they understood the texts. That's how they understood the instructions in the Quran and the Sunnah. And that's how they acted upon him. Ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, there are some few people whom I cannot thank no matter what I do. I cannot pay them back regardless of what I do. One of them is a person who comes when he has a need, he comes directly to me before anyone else. That's one person I cannot pay back. They understood what it meant to relieve people's difficulties, to fulfill people's needs. And they considered it a source of joy because it is a source of hasanat. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to use us to the benefit of the Muslims. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma sta'amilna.